a little bit. And this is how we're going to proceed. If you would sit down for just a moment, I need to share a couple of things with us. I still need you all here. And um, I guess it's not just on Tuesdays that we get to hear a sound. I don't know about you, but I heard that sound. It was like angels singing in here. What a big God bless you to these guys. Awesome. Thank you so, so very much. Wow. I don't think I've ever heard that song sang any more um, anointed than that. I mean, you know, people with pyrotechnics and all kinds of technicalities in their voice can do stuff. But when the anointing is in the mix, you can always tell. Praise God. I'm excited. I just want to say welcome once again to the guys who are here for the first time. And I know some of you have been in some of our meetings, but this is your first time in this building. And so we say welcome to you too, especially. And so, folks, the reason why I came up here, I mean, this is not usually the time that I would come up, um, you know, from worship, we'll go into praying. That hasn't changed. We're still praying. But I would like to intimate us with a, a little bit about certain things that have been revealed to us by God. And as we're praying today, I want you to bear in mind the people that have traveled for the holiday weekend. You know, remember the Whiteheads and just anybody else that comes to your mind, Sheila and her family. Just remember people that are not here and let's pray for them also. Today, we will pray on a couple of things, but the focus, thank you, Charles, is really on children. Remember a couple of months ago, I was here. I believe service was actually wrapping up when the Lord showed me the giant that was fishing children out of a pond. I mean, it looked like he was fishing for fishes, but by the time he brought them out, the, what I saw was he was actually going after children. And I'm not gonna get too descriptive because we have children in here, but I can tell you more about that later. But one of the things that that started for us was that got our attention. God started to show other people, or afterwards, other people had seen concerning children. At some point today, our brother John is going to come up here and share with y'all. That's after the children have gone. He'll share with you some of the things that God's shown to him. Alan, the same. Alan's going to come up too. And when they come up here, we're going to listen to what God has revealed to them. Take it to heart and let that be a burden with which we pray. You see what I mean? Let us not just hear it as a rendition from seers that are gifted by God with the gift of visions. No, it is great for us to have gifts in the body of Christ, but the gifts aren't in the body of Christ to get us excited or to make us feel like, yeah, we're gifted in this assembly. No, the gifts that God has given to us, particularly in the area of the prophetic, we have seers in this house. There's a reason why God assembled us the way we are in this place. And I keep telling us, it is not so that we can continue to just feed each other, which is great, but it is primarily for us as a unit of the body of Christ to function as watchmen, to pray for the body of Christ, to pray for the saints. You see, and when we're praying for the saints, we're praying for the saints that include those who are yet to come back into the fold. Remember what Jesus said. Jesus said to the Father, he says, I do not pray for the world. He said, but I pray for these ones. He says, for the ones that you have given to me, none shall be lost. Even the ones that haven't found their way home, prophetically, we can discern the ones that have been given to the Lord Jesus Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to them. And it's not just going to happen magically. It's going to happen when we are in surrender and when we are prayed up. One of the things that the Holy Spirit's made very clear to me in this, uh, in the last couple of days is he asked me a series of questions about the sacrifice that Jesus made. And you know, one of the things that I've always told you about that you need to be attentive to is when you know that God is asking you questions, don't try to impress God because he knows all things and he knows how much you already know. Just pay attention because sometimes in that inner witness or from that inner voice, you can also discern what the answer is because God is the author and the finisher. So when God speaks a word of question, if you know how to listen, the answer is also in that question. You understand what I mean? So we are the ones who ask questions that have no answers. Things like, do you not care that we perish? 
That is not a question. That is a confession. They're essentially confessing that they have unbelief. You understand what I mean? But when God comes and asks you a question, then you should know that he is revealing a truth that may have been hidden from you. And so in any case, when the Holy Spirit asked me about the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, one of the very first things that came to my attention was that Jesus was very particular about how we prioritize the issues of children in our midst. He says, suffer the little children to come unto me for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so we know that Jesus has great interest in children. And then two days or so passed and then he asked me again about the sacrifice of Jesus at the cross. The summary of our conversation was this. The Lord Jesus did all of what he did, not just so that we can anticipate his return. He did all of what he did so that we can participate toward his return. Many of us are just happy anticipating Jesus coming to save us from inflation. You're just happy for Jesus to come and save you from, from those family members that don't repent. They keep getting worse. They keep getting more politically crazy. They keep getting more annoying around the dinner table. You want to be saved from all kinds of things. But the truth of the word of God is the rapture is not an escape strategy for us to get out of this world. If anything at all, that which the Bible describes as the rapture is the getting caught up to be empowered with the new body to come back here to continue to do the work of ruling and reigning with Christ. And so if we think about it in reality, it did all of that so that we can participate in how the kingdom of heaven is prepared for. John the Baptist was regarded by Jesus as the greatest of the sons of men that ever lived up until that time. And even said that the least in the kingdom that comes afterwards will be greater than he. Why? Because of the mission of preparing the way for the kingdom of God to come to earth. The kingdom of God has never really come to earth. When God made heavens and earth, the heavens were there above the waters and the earth was here beside the waters. But the time is coming when the greatest thing that can ever happen on the earth will happen when heaven comes down to earth. And the people that have been called to be participators in that exercise are regarded by heaven as special forces. And so if we are to participate, the question we ask ourselves is this, how do we participate? I know that jokingly in the world we tease when we say this generation is spoiled because we give people participation trophies. But in reality, that is all we're getting participation trophies because everything that we get to do God has already done the Bible says he has perfected everything that concerns us he says in Psalms 55 he says that which I command I the Lord will perform it he says I am the one that work in you both to will and to do of your good pleasure the Bible says faithful is he who has promised who will also do it and so when my children are going to if my children are going to have peace and joy and the righteousness of God's kingdom and the Holy Spirit it's not going to be my doing it's going to be his doing I am only participating as a co-laborer aka witness and so what God is asking us to do is not the hardest part. He's asking us to participate, to be called laborers, to be the figures that are seen carrying the glory of God. And when you think about the fact that Jesus paid such a price for us to have an opportunity to participate, then praying and watching for an hour will not be a challenge. It takes more than praying for an hour to get prepared to go to the cross. But that was all he assigned to the disciples. He says, would you watch with me an hour? He didn't say, come and take some of the beating with me. He says, no, I'll take all the beating. The Bible says even a thousand years or so before Jesus was born, that the chastisement of our peace will be on him. And by his stripes, we shall be healed. That was already prophesied. And so they knew because they were Jewish men. They knew the scriptures. They knew that he was the Lamb of God because John the Baptist told them. The Holy Spirit emphasized it to them. But Jesus said to them, just pray. That's what I'm asking you to do. Let God do the work of conviction, of, of convicting children. Let God do the work of strengthening them and giving them the resolve to say no to sin. But what you and I are supposed to do, Amen. praise the Lord, which is to pray should never be seen as a burden. If anything at all, we should celebrate it. Now, but what is interesting, which I have told you time and time again, the reason why many of us don't pray is because heaven has a sense of humor. One of the ways by which heaven triggers within us the capacity to pray is by making us feel tired. The Bible says, Jesus speaking in Luke chapter 18 verse 1, it says men ought always to pray and not to faint. 
So basically, fainting or feeling tired or feeling frustrated or feeling overwhelmed is not because God does not love you. It's because God is saying that is the alarm that wakes you up to pray. Let me say this and I'll say this very slowly so that nothing gets lost in my Nigerian accent. I want to say this very slowly. Nobody here likes to be woken from sleep. Oh, we love our sleep. The human body needs sleep. And because of the fact that sleep is a necessity, and because of the fact that sleep is rewarding, ask any woman in the room, they know the value of sleep. They, they're more beautiful when they have slept for longer. That's why they're like, oh, I need to get my beauty sleep. Right? But I tell you what, we subject ourselves to inconveniences when we need to wake up. That's why we set alarms that ring like there were music being played from hell. If you're listening, let me tell you something, you try to make your alarm a Kenny G uh, soundtrack, you're not gonna get up. You're just gonna keep getting serenaded into deeper levels of sleep. You will go from sleep to sleep and may you not go from sleep to deep sleep. But I tell you that because I know that from the natural elements of this world, according to Romans chapter 1 verse 20, the Bible says from the physical, natural elements of this world, we have an understanding of the invisible attributes of God and the working of eternal powers. So the way inconvenience rouses you in the natural, so also inconveniences rouse you in the spirit. Many of us will not pray if everything is going nice and dandy. You have more money than you can spend. All your neighbors love you. All your family members bow when they see you coming. You're in health. You weigh just two pounds. You're feeling great. You're not. Let me tell you something. If everything is nice and dandy, many of us will not pray. It's there in the Bible. The man of God prayed. He says, Lord, bless me, but not too much so that I would not forget you. He said, but also do not deprive me so that I don't steal and soil your holy name. You understand what I mean? But God arranges a lot of these things to wake us up to pray. I sought the Lord and I said, God, why is Satan coming after the children in this time and age? And he said to me, he said, if Satan doesn't appear to be coming after your children, nobody's going to pray for my children. Because a lot of what you see that Satan is doing to children today, making them not love God anymore. Look at the generation that we have today. People are being told that they are the God themselves and that their will shall be done. We call it new age. New age is essentially a religion that makes self the God, simple definition. Our children are no longer praying, they're manifesting. Manifesting is a real thing. It means you are bringing all of the faculties and resources within you to fulfill your own desires. Manifesting is a form of prayer wherein you stand as a man and pray to yourself on the throne as a God. Whereas we're supposed to pray the prayers of supplication, which means a humbled prayer, wherein you magnify the Lord, the, ones who sit, the one who sits upon the throne, and say, Lord, even though these are the things that I want, it doesn't matter at this moment, not my will, but yours be done. Prayer is submitting to the will of the Almighty God. And we need to pray. A couple of months ago, like I said, the Lord stood me up here and he showed me that vision and we started to pray. And after that, other people have seen visions. After that, I've seen, in fact, I was woken up this morning to a notification saying that there is a ministry that we are aware of who are now day 13. So it's the 14th right now. They've been doing since January 2nd, I believe, praying for children every day. And they're gonna do it for the rest of the year. And I'm like, well, even from the other side of the, globe, of the world, this is the same message. The spirit is one, isn't it? And so today, while we have the children sitting here, as many of you all, parents that feel comfortable to bring your children up here, please let them come in here to be prayed for. And I'm gonna tell you before you bring them what we're gonna pray for specifically, okay? Please, can somebody help me with my Bible? I was getting so fired up. Okay, so Anita and Diamond, if you wanna sit down for two minutes, you can, because but if you're happy standing, after this prayer, we're going to do some more singing because my wife and Manuel Lida and Alan, they will lead us in some more prayers. And then afterwards, myself and John will come up. John's going to tell you a little bit about that dream because I want us to do something today. 
every piece of revelation that is shared with us around what God is revealing, we will dissect them and turn them into prayers. On Tuesday, while I was here, I saw this meeting and the Lord showed this meeting to me as a prayer meeting. But I kept it to myself. I don't think I announced it. And then Alan came and he says, the Lord is showing to me that this prayer, this meeting is a prayer meeting. I said, flesh and blood. I have not revealed that to you, but my Father in heaven, because now there are two witnesses. And while I was yet speaking, my wife is of the same mind. So there are three witnesses. And out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the Bible says a matter shall be established. So today we will pray. So come with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 55. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 55. What does he say in verse 7? He says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous his thought. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous his thought. Bear with me one second. I need to just quickly bring this up because we need to pray this along with this confession of faith. So Isaiah 55 verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. God has only one recommendation for when we stray from the path of righteousness. God never said, oh, the wicked should feel bad for being wicked. No, he didn't say, go tell the wicked off. He didn't say, avoid the wicked. He says, let the wicked just turn from his way. Let the unrighteous from his thoughts. And so the world is trying to turn us one against the other. The world wants the church to continue to judge the younger generation for walking away from righteousness and wallowing in iniquity. Whereas, that is not what God wants. God wants them to repent and He wants you to pray for their repentance. He says, let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous, his thoughts. So that is the reason why we're praying. But the, reason, but the prayer that we're going to be saying over the children specifically is in Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7, we're going to read verses 14 and 15. 14 says, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Curds and honey he shall eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. The will of God for our children is for them to have that instinct by God, that divine consciousness that says no to sin and yes to righteousness. Now for the parents in the room, I'm sure you know that we all need this more than ever before. In the past, it's difficult for your children to do things in secrecy. Everyone lived in the same compound that is no bigger than this room. So whatever the child is doing, you can see the walls are never taller than anybody's waist. So you can always see people. But now your child can be sitting next to you and be watching things on their phone that you are not aware of. They can be playing a game and you are sitting there watching the game and you don't even know how much witchcraft is going on in the game. It doesn't matter if they call it Minecraft or witchcraft. There's a lot of things that are hidden from you as a parent. So what do you do? You need to trust that the God Almighty who sees the heart can guide the feet. Because if the one who sees the heart is the one in charge of guiding the feet, then we know that our children will not stumble. Jesus says there are 12 hours in the day and 12 the same in the night. He who walks in the light will not stumble. Our children will not stumble if the light of God's consciousness and the fear of God is reigning supreme upon their thoughts. I don't know about you, but I want to pray that my children will receive insight by God to be able to choose good against evil. So today, by the grace of God, we're going to have children come up here 
And the reason why we lay hands when people come up is because the Bible says that by the laying on of the hands of the eldership, the gifts that are on the inside of us are stirred up. And that is the reason because we know that God has already put within them a measure of faith that allows for them to be able to pick up the phone when heaven calls. If you don't have heaven's SIM card, you cannot communicate on heaven's network. And so God does not want anybody to have an excuse to say, well, God never called me. No, God has put a SIM, a SIM card in every one of us. Do they call it SIM card here? That thing in your phone that lets you join the network? It is called by heaven a measure of faith. So in every child here, there is a connection to heaven. And we want to activate that by the laying on of hands so that they will always hear the voice of God telling them this is the way, walk in it. So beginning from London, let every child that is coming for prayers come up. And I would like to ask John, oh John is busy, Alan and my wife can come up, if John can come up too. And I just want us to do the laying on of hands. And if you can just sing in the background as well, however softly, that will be awesome. Tia. I don't even think you knew we were praying for children today when you decided to invite the neighborhood. You see, you are led by the Holy Spirit. God is good already. And so, where, where is the eldership? Where is John? Where is my wife? Where is Alan? Where is Manuel? Lida? Kenyatta? I want all of you all to be here to join in the laying on of hands. Josephine and Zoe, please, I want you to be in the back just to help minister. I, I'm glad you've joined them too. Thank you. Awesome. Praise the Lord. God is good. And so, by the grace of God, of the ones the Father has given to us, none shall be lost. Jesus said it. He says, of the ones the Father has given to me, none shall be lost. I stand here today by the grace of God to let you know that the same authority with which Jesus spoke is available to us in his name. No man can wield such an authority except for the one that's come from above. And he says, I have given that authority to you. We're not going to lose any one of our children to any kind of addiction. We're not going to lose any of our children to excessive pleasure seeking. We're not going to lose any one of our children to the forces of darkness. There is no trend in the world that will be able to take you away from the Almighty God. Today, as hands have been laid on you, let there be an activation within you of the power of God to say no to sin and yes to righteousness. To say no to bad things and yes to good things always in the mighty name of Jesus. Our children will be led by the Spirit of God. For the Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the children of God. These children, even though they have come from our bowels, they are indeed children of God. We are not presenting grandchildren to God. God has no grandchildren. Everyone is directly connected connected to God and because of that direct connection we know that they will not miss out on what God is giving out today which is the quickening and the activation of the grace to say yes to righteousness always David told his son Solomon he says my son when sin has come to tempt you do not give in I declare to you today, I speak by the grace of God to your spirit man because deep calls to deep that when others come to tell you to do things that are not godly, that are not right, you will not be intimidated, you will not give in, you will not be enticed by their words and actions, but you will stand your ground and do that which is right before the Lord all the days of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you by the grace of God because these children are a gift from you. They are your reward. In the mighty name of Jesus, righteousness is their portion in the land of the living. They will say yes to the truth and they will recognize the lie and say no to the lie. In the mighty name of Jesus, these ones are light in the darkness. They are salt, the salt of the earth they are. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you because their light will shine and no darkness will be able to overshadow them. They will know when to stop. And then we know when to say no. 
they will know when to say yes to you oh God in the mighty name of Jesus they will not have a taste for the things of the world they will not have a taste for the pleasures of this life but they will only desire to do the will of God always so that the will of God will be done through them and light even the light of God's love will shine from them you are the light of the world you are the salt of the earth you will not lose your shine neither would you lose your seasoning power in the mighty name of Jesus father I thank you because you are with them always even to the very end did I get everybody father in Jesus name thank you thank you because these ones have been brought here today by your hand divinely so that you can equip them to make a difference in their world in the mighty name of Jesus praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah I just want to say to you guys I want you to think for a second about what is most important in this life you can go for a couple of hours without drinking water even though you shouldn't but you can you can go for like half a day without eating but can you go for a moment like a minute or two without breathing no you become uncomfortable but can you see the air that you breathe no that tells you that the most important things in life are not the things that you see but they are the things that you do not see so whenever anybody brings you any activity or they suggest anything don't let what they're showing you tempt you to doing what they're asking think about the spirit of God that you cannot see that is on the inside of you that tells you this ain't right mom and dad are not going to be happy with this God is not going to be happy with this this is taken from you this is not adding to you when you think like that you give God an opportunity to lead you always and by so doing you will have a life that is pleasing to God and effective upon the earth does that make sense God bless you thank you for coming we'll see you guys later praise the Lord Alrighty, so Miss Laura, please, if you don't mind helping us just lead them to the room uh, where the teachers are going to come to minister to them. Praise the Lord. God is good. And John, so once you, once you drop off your son, you can come up and let me know because I want people to hear at least a part of your dream. Praise God. So very quickly, we're just going to give them a moment to leave the room and the rest of us, we're just going to take that song again, even if it's just the last part of that hallelujah song. Is it hallelujah? Oh, holy yeah, what the, and then once we do that, um, we're going to go back into another um, round of prayers. So my leader is going to come and then afterwards my wife is going to come. We are in a season of prayers. Now for, uh, for some people here that may not have heard or haven't been a part of the teaching, one of the things that the Lord Jesus made very clear to us is that close to when he returns, everything that happened when he was leaving will happen again as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. And specifically, for us here at Communion House, we began to see very clearly, particularly in the year 2021, that those things are beginning to happen. One of the very first signs that we saw of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ was the fact that Jesus told me one Sunday morning, that was when we were still having our Sunday meetings at the basement, I was getting ready to go on the radio first and then to go to the basement. And he said to me, he says, they have started taking money. I heard it just like you can hear my voice. And I was like, I knew it was the Lord because I was the only one in the studio. There was nobody else. And I hadn't dialed into the radio station just yet. So I knew that was God very clearly. He said to me, they have started taking money. I said, who? And the Lord said to me, the ones who will suppress the truth. Remember when Jesus was raised from the dead. The Bible says that the soldiers of the temple that were assigned to guard the temple because they said his disciples will steal him away and start spreading rumors that he's resurrected. They were afraid that he might truly be raised from the dead. So they wanted to suppress that glorious reality. The Bible says that the soldiers of the temple after Jesus was raised from the dead, they were eyewitnesses to resurrection because they saw the resurrection power. Take the stone that was shielding, that, that sealed off the tomb. They saw the stone being taken and flung up the side of a hill. A couple of men can roll a stone a few inches, but it takes the power of God to take such a heavy stone and roll it up the hill. The Bible says they went to the high priest and they said, we saw him take the stone. Him is a person. They saw the person of the Holy Spirit. 
through the ministry of an angel take the stone with divine heavenly power and when the high priest heard that he was like if this word gets out we're doomed nobody's coming back to the synagogue we're going to lose money we're going to lose face and the bible says they took money from the tithes and the offerings so it's not today that people have been abusing church money and God's money. The Bible says they took money from the coffers of the temple and gave it to the soldiers and tell them to disappear. So they said, do not say a word to anybody of that which you have heard. They paid money to suppress the truth. And if you look at what started happening in 2021, money is being paid to people to suppress the truth about what the luciferians are doing in this world the children of satan have been activated to begin their own revival which is to bring gross immortal immorality and darkness upon the earth but it's okay if darkness has to first go because that is the way it has always been darkness always precedes light so that when light comes it's unmistakable the bible says in the last days darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people but also in those last days your light will come you will rise and you will shine and so i want to tell you something that they may have been trying to suppress the truth but the reality of it is that the more they try the more people wake up to recognize that the only person that is on our side is god <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so that was our very first sign that was as clear as I just described to you. And since then, we have been seeing more of the manifestations of the things surrounding the resurrection. It began with what? The persecution? No, that's not the first thing. So you get minus five from the previous test. So you may have to return the present you won, the last quiz competition. The first thing was what? The prosecution. Prosecution, persecution, actually you're right, persecution, prosecution, execution, and ascension, re resurrection and ascension, right? So we know that that is the order of things. What did Jesus say about his persecution? He says, the way they persecuted me, they will persecute you. But what did he recommend as a remedy to persecution? He says, when they persecute you, when they curse you, what do you do? He says, pray for them. When you're tired of the way they're treating you and the way they're hating on you, when you're tired of the things that you see, you know, the more we see into what the devil is doing, the more disheartening it is sometimes when you realize that, oh my goodness, even that organization too. Are we not beginning to see that certain people that we thought we could trust in government, are truly agents of Satan and now we're beginning to realize that certain agencies that we have funded have been hijacked by Satan to be used against us. The same thing that happened in the time of Jesus. The people were the ones that were funding the temple, paying the wages of the high priest, paying Nicodemus and the rest of them. But the same people that were being voted for by the people, paid by the people, turned against the people and crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. But when you begin to see those things, what does it do to you? It makes you faint-hearted. And Jesus was like, that's an alarm. When you feel faint-hearted, wake up and pray. So this generation is not going to go to hell in the handbasket because of the prayer of the saints. The system of this world is doomed for this. Praise the Lord. The system of this world is doomed and getting ready to be replaced. But the people of it can still be saved. The Bible says that we are the light of the world. So let us pray that none of the ones that the Lord has given Jesus will be lost. So before Manuel Lida comes up, I want every one of us to rise up and we're going to just read one verse of scripture from Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7, we're going to read maybe two, but let's start with Matthew chapter 7 verse 2. Anybody excited to pray? Amen. God is good. In fact, that is our primary assignment in the house of God. Jesus says, my house, my father's house is not meant to be for buying and selling. It is meant to be a house of prayer. So, but you know, you know, because we're so spoiled these days, we've prioritized our own pleasure over prayer. You know, we like to enjoy things that just make us feel good, like great music, like wonderful stories, like made up testimonies just to make everybody get goosebumps, you know and um, anything that sells a seat, you know? But in reality, there is no substitute to prayer. And we need to get to that place. 
Let me tell you something. I'll share this with you very quickly. Several years ago, this was where we actually got to know Manuel Lida and her husband. We were running a small group out of our house as part of the church that we used to go to. And when we started, we had a long list of people who signed up, but they didn't show up. And so we were advised by other people to say, oh, y'all are new in America. In America, you need to call people. You need to call them and ask them to come. So I was like, oh, good idea. So I picked up the list and I wanted to call people. And you know what, Jesus, what the Holy Spirit said to me? He said, if you start out by calling people and begging them to come, you will always call and beg them to come. He said, but if you wait, I will bring the ones that need to be here. And so let me tell you something. I am not in a hurry to fill seats because quality is more important in the kingdom of God. You see, God is not looking for people, so to speak. The Bible says the angels in heaven are innumerable. But he knows the number of them because when Lucifer and some of the boys left, he says they are a third of the people here. But God help you if you can number the rest of the third. You understand what I mean? And so there are a multitude of people. But God says, I want a royal priesthood, a people of peculiarities. And so when you look at his history, tells us that God is after quantity, quality, not quantity. About three million Israelites left Egypt. But only two out of the three million made it into the promised land. I'm not talking about two million or 200,000. Two, just like, just like Michael, Mercy, and Zion. Just two people. Only Joshua and Caleb. The rest of those people died out. Simply because God gave them such a long time to get Egypt out of them. But they just wouldn't. And God is like, I'm not going to let you bring all that corruption where you were all about the pleasure. When you read the Exodus, all of what the children of Israel said about Egypt were the things that give them pleasure. Not whatever give God glory. They were like, oh, we miss the garlic. We miss the onions. Okay. What about the wonders of the working of God? Do you not miss that? No, they don't care about God. They just care about their own bellies. And the Bible says the food for belly and belly for the food, but both shall be destroyed in the fire. So we need to recognize the place of learning as good soldiers of the cross how to endure things that are not fun. The Bible says learn to endure hardship as good soldiers of the cross. I say that because I want you to be aware of what is immediately ahead of us here at Communion House. We're having prayer meeting after prayer meeting. The time that we are dedicating the prayer is on the rise. You know what I said with you on Tuesday? That we need the anointing to break the yokes. And the anointing needs fire to drive away the flies. Because if we're too cold, the flies will settle and the anointing will be contaminated. And what do we do as the church if we do not have the anointing? We become counselors. No offense to the doctor amongst us. Okay, he's not just a counselor. He's an anointed psychiatrist delivering people of demonic spirits. Okay. So even though he has all the long credentials, he still has the power. We are not meant to just counsel people and encourage people and, and comfort them when they are sad. No, we are supposed to move and operate by the anointing. And for the anointing to be preserved, we need the fire. And what is the fire? Prayer. Let me tell you something. I am begging you. Try prayer and see. Someone says, oh, but there was a time in the past I prayed and God didn't answer my prayer. I was praying for this family member not to die, but then they ended up dying. My question is, did you even ask God what he wants first? Because sometimes we want to impose our sentiments on God. And when God sees that your heart is not right, he's not going to get you, let you get away with an accidental miracle because an accidental miracle becomes a religion. And God does not want you to become religious, building tabernacles around false experiences. So let me tell you something. Forget about disappointments in the past. Let the word of God be true. Romans chapter 3 verse 4 says, let God be true and every man a liar. So Matthew chapter 7 verse 2. Man, my leader, get ready to come and pray for two minutes. Praise God. Matthew 7 2, what does he say? He says, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And when the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. This is an insight that God gave me when it comes to prayer. And I'm hoping that by the time this dawns on you, even you will pray more than you've been praying. One of the benefits of having Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father is what? The Bible says he's forever there, is there in eternity. That's what it means. When you say forever there is old English, it throws out the real meaning. The Bible says he's there in eternity, making intercessions 
for you and I. Now, if Jesus is making intercessions for you and I, is a general intercession. But the measure of it that becomes applicable and specific to your own existence is a function of the measure that you give. So it applies to prayer. The more you pray for other people, the more you are prayed for because the Bible says the measure with which you measure, it will be measured back to you. The Bible says Jesus himself speaking in Matthew chapter 5. He says, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Even though God has mercy on all of us, there is an increase in the measure of mercy that you qualify for when you begin to show mercy. How do you show mercy for people? By praying for them, by interceding for them, by pleading for them. Because you are not the author of mercy. God is the author of mercy. So to be merciful means to induce mercy on behalf of other people. So if you want to experience more of the working of the power of God in your favor, you can control that by allowing yourself to show mercy in the place of prayer. So today pray for other people as though your own life depends on it. So manually, that, man, please come on, praise God. In fact, let me just keep coming. This has just been brought to my attention. The Lord just showed me that there are angels that have been released. Angels have been released and remember on the 3rd of September, I stood here and there was an angel that stood between those two cameras and he was holding a placard that showed me Jeremiah chapter 22, 22. And I didn't even remember at that time what it was. I was like, well, they're showing me Jeremiah 22, 22. Let's read it. And you saw what's been happening in the world since then. Everything the angel said, which is in Jer Jeremiah 22, 22, started to happen five days after that. We started hearing it in the news, right? And so what I'm seeing right now is that is a release of angels walking around us holding messages that are very specific to your individual assignment. The Bible says, let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the churches. God is not commissioning you without a command. He's not asking you to fight in the dark. He's giving you equipping. Just be attentive. You don't need to guess. Just ask and say, Lord, what will you have me say? What will you have me pray for? What are your angels showing me? Let me see that I'm a prayer with intentionality and with focus. Open my eyes and let me see you, Lord. Let me see you, Lord. Let me see you, Lord. Open my eyes. Let me see you, Lord. Let me see you, Lord. What you are showing me. Let me see you, Lord. I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus that we would allow ourselves. It doesn't even matter if you have never truly, if you don't claim that you've ever heard God and you're thinking, I don't even, I have not had an angelic experience that I recall. It can begin now. He begins now. There is nothing that I have done that qualifies me, that disqualifies you. You also can ask. The Bible says ask and you will receive. God told Jeremiah, stop guessing, stop guessing. He says, ask of me and I will show you. God is committed to showing you. You just need to ask him so that you're not praying amiss. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, may we enjoy the ministry of your angels that you have commissioned and dispatched as ministering spirits to those of us who are heirs of salvation together with Christ Jesus. I know for sure that heaven, the angels of heaven, they have an appetite for revelation that comes from the sons of men. So when we share revelation by the Holy Spirit, we induce the presence of angels. And so let the Lord lead you by his Holy Spirit and do not deny yourself the pleasure of the ministry of the angels of God that minister to you as an heir of salvation with Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Thank you, Pastor Moses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, I love, I just love Holy Spirit. I just love Holy Spirit. I love when he confirms his word and give me more confidence to stand and say what I'm getting ready to say. Hallelujah. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word. So Pastor Moses just said, um, you changed my prayer points. You said I got two minutes, so I'm going to try to do that. <laughs> He said they, they saw the angels with the sign and wanting to know the assignment. So Holy Spirit was telling me, you know, what is our assignment? And I had a dream really quick um, uh, some years ago. And the dream was um, we were 
in the in the in the in in a room just preparing, preparing, preparing. And I'm going really quick with this dream. We were preparing, and then we left. Everybody dispersed to go on to their assignment, right? And so I was like, I need I need to get to my second job. Can somebody give me a ride to my second job? Nobody wanted to give me a ride. I asked several times. So I said, okay, I guess I just need to walk. So I started walking to my second job. Now at the time, I worked in Alpharetta. This is in you know real life. So I knew that's where in my head I was going to Alpharetta for my second job. On my way walking to my second job, I found myself in front of a courthouse. And then the courthouse, it was family members and I was like, they don't want me here. But I, uh, let me just see what's going on. It was my, um, it was, they didn't want me there at the time, but one did, cause he was in getting ready to go to court. And I said, well, should I pray for him? And, uh, and I was like, he may not want me to pray for him. But Holy Spirit said, go pray for him. So we went in, just found myself in there, prayed for him, and deliverance happened. That was, long story short, that's the first job, intercession. Intercession is the first job that we need to be doing. The Lord, clearly, this dream was so long, but I'm letting you know, it's not just for me, it's for the church. Intercession is our first job. For me to be saying, I only worked one job at the time, and I'm saying, just take me to my second job. So he, my first job was intercession, found myself at a courthouse. He gets delivered in the court. It, it's, it was amazing what God did in that dream to give us revelation that our first ministry our first job is to do the will of the father so we're going to pray this my prayer point hallelujah the word for this year was to go forth we must go forth about being doing our father's will like Jesus said and um, he said in Luke 2 uh, 2, 49 then Jesus uh, no 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 and he said to them why do you seek me this was Jesus parents looking for them he was 12 years old and got lost and Luke 2 he said why are you seeking me Um, why do you seek me do you know do you not know that I must be about my father's business what is the business that we need to pray for? This is what, and, and Alan came up here and said, tonight the Lord will, he said, he will give understanding tonight. He will give understanding tonight of what our position is, what our what our office is in the kingdom and what that looks like. And 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 I, I'm, I beg of you when you pray these things because it'll look different. It, it's the same for all of us. Luke 4, 4, 18 says, this was Jesus talking. And the spirit of the Lord is up on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news. Hallelujah. The good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart heart to proclaim liberty to those that are captive right and recover the sight of the blind hallelujah to set the liberty to those who are oppressed so what does that look like for you how it, wh- whoever's around you in your the school that you are at or your job that you are at your children how do you set them how do you open up their blind eyes This is by the Holy Spirit. We are anointed to do that. We are anointed to set them free. This is our first job, but it comes out of intercession and prayer first. So please, let's stand and let's begin to pray that God give us understanding, that you receive understanding tonight. What is your position? What is the position? The first job is for intercession. We are intercessors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you and we bless your name, oh God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the teacher. Hallelujah, that you are the one that revealed all things. We thank you and we bless you now this night. We ask that you give us clear understanding, hallelujah, that we will be about your business oh God hallelujah that we will be about your kingdom oh God in the mighty name of Jesus reveal to us oh God our calling and what the the specific thing that you have called us to do Lord God how you use us Lord God in the mighty name of Jesus Lord God let it enlighten us tonight enlighten us 
us tonight, oh God. Let us not leave here confused about our calling, oh God. Hallelujah, because your kingdom come first. Hallelujah, we will intercede, oh God. Hallelujah, I come against the unnatural sleep, oh God, that has been laboring over us, oh God. The unnatural sleep, Lord God, that you will wake us up. Hallelujah, a divine awakening, oh God, that we will wake up and that we will pray. Hallelujah, that we will pray, that we will intercede. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that we will proclaim your word, oh God. Hallelujah, that we declare it now, oh God, that you come first, Lord. You come first. Hallelujah, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, the grace to pray, the grace to study, oh God, the grace to hear your word, oh God, the grace to proclaim your word, oh God, to be bold, oh God, for you. Hallelujah, to be bold for our children. Hallelujah, to pray for our children, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Oh God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you because we know we can't do it without you. It is a finished work. Hallelujah. We are walking into a finished work. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. We bless your name. Hallelujah. There's no one like you, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. You are the Savior, Lord Jesus. You are the Savior, oh God. You are the protector, oh God. Hallelujah. Glory. Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give me a second. Praise the Lord. Please, you can go and sit down, the two of you. Christian, thank you so much. I hope you guys are still happy staying on for a bit longer. God is good. Before my wife goes on, I just want to stress something here very quickly because we know the Lord is speaking to hearts right now. Amen. However, sometimes when you're standing next to people, they can help you hear better. So the people next to you is either they distract you or they help you to hear better. So if you're standing next to someone who is paying attention and you miss what is being said, you can say, what did they say? Right? What is going on right now is there are things being said to us that we can understand better if we know what to listen to. Manuelita came up and the dream that she had took place where? In a court, in a courthouse. In a courthouse. What did we read in Matthew chapter seven verse two? Judgment. Judge, the way you judge is the way you will be judged. The Bible says in Matthew chapter seven verse one, judge not that you may not be judged for the same measure with which you measure. Prayer is a form of judgment. Let me say that again. Prayer is a what? Is a form of judgment. When Jesus prayed in John chapter 7, he went to the Father and he made a case as an advocate for the disciples. He gave all the reasons why God needed to protect them. He gave all the reasons why nothing should happen to them. You understand what I mean? Because that's what we do in a courthouse. We argue people's cases. When you pray, remind heaven of why your children must not depart from the path of righteousness. You see, remind 
God if there's anybody in your family that has refused to be born again. Remind God that what he said we should pray is that the will of God be done on earth as it is done in heaven. That is a verdict. It's like when you go to a courthouse and people are quoting the case of Anderson versus Roland. Because they can levy or leverage a previous verdict to substantiate a claim. So Jesus says, let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. heaven. So you can go to God and say, God, your will needs to be done here. And what is the will of God? The Bible says it is not the will of God that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the saving grace. So advocate for the lost so that you can receive a crown and they can be saved from hell. Yeah. Prayer is advocacy. John is going to come up. Do you mind if John comes up very quickly? Because I know you're really on fire, ready to go. Amen. My wife always is. I mean, she literally prays, prays around the clock sometimes. So, please, just hold on a little bit. The reason why I believe John should come next is because John's dream essentially also started in a heavenly courthouse. He was in a courthouse in the realm of the spirit where cases were being decided against children and immediate penalties were being carried out. Are there any more children in here? Oh, praise God, because some of these... Okay, yeah, because, yeah, he's asleep. Okay, that's good. Alrighty, please, John. So while John is sharing that dream, we can sit down, relax our legs a little bit, but please don't sleep. We're going to get back into prayers. Praise God. John. This was, it. man, when I heard Manny Lady stuff, it gave me chills because I was seeing it. And I had a dream the other day and I... I messaged Pastor Moses right after and I would say it was the most violent dream I've ever had in my life and usually I don't you know I don't watch violent stuff I don't like horror movies or that stuff I don't watch any of that trash so, so uh, it was the most violent dream and I remember waking up it was like 3 a.m. and I woke up and I go to bed pretty late Pastor Moses knows I, go to, I don't sleep a lot but I, I woke up and I was like what in the world did I just dream and it was kind of like if you ever watched the movie 300 where like you know there's a lot of blood and people fighting and stuff many years ago came out it's kind of like that. So let me explain how the dream happened. So it started where I was in the dream and my wife Alice was in the dream and she was holding a baby. I don't know if it was my baby or what. It was is it real or who was. She was just holding a baby. I didn't even see the baby's face. She was just holding it. And she was following along with me. And it was kind of like I was leading her. We, we come to this beautiful, big, uh, white house. And it was like crystals everywhere, beautiful. And it kind of, in the dream, I thought, this is like heaven. And I remember seeing all these jewels everywhere. And I went to go touch one and I saw... This, and I remember very clearly, it looked like an angel on the side, it was a lady. And her appearance, I mean, she had a, a reddish hair flowing down to the ground and just beautiful uh, dress and everything. She was sitting there and she went, um, <clears throat> and I went, oh, thank you. And I kept walking. And it was like the whole, there wasn't even a wall there, it was just like an open, the house was just open. I walk and we're walking. And all of a sudden we get on a, uh, the, it shifts and it starts getting darker and darker and darker. And we go, we're going down, do, 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 like in an elevator. And we go down and all of a sudden I find myself, it's kind of like you went through a big hole. I found myself and I'm observing. This whole dream is like I'm observing, like I'm not even, it's not my dream, it's just like I'm watching. The whole thing is like I'm watching. Um, and I see there's a big court system. And there's a guy, that's why it, it, when she was talking about the court, I was like, you know, and this, this dream was so powerful. It, for like two days, I literally, we just couldn't get it off my mind. I was watching them and there was a judge there at the, um, there was a judge there on the panel and there was kind of like, if you ever see like England with the parliament, uh, kind of like when the judge is there, you know, you got the jury basically. Uh, and there's all these jury members and judge says, uh, there's a, there's a heavy set kid there sitting there on trial. I don't know, 10 to 12 years old. And he was wearing something really weird. It was kind of like a gym uniform like spandex kind of thing and I remember thinking of the gym I was like that is really weird like why is he wearing that um, and I was observing all this stuff and I, and I remember in the dream I was like nobody could see me I was literally just like observing and uh, everything's going on I remember the judge in my dream I remember it was a spirit of lust in the dream and he said how do you plead and the kid said innocent I'm innocent and the judge said we'll see if you're innocent and the kid left. He said, go over there. The kid left. And the judge had this evil look on his face. And he, I could tell in the dream he was going to go molest him. And I remember thinking, this is wrong. We got to get out of here. And I told Alice, I said, we got to get out of here now. 
And the judge said to the jury, he said, anybody that wants to come join me in this, you can come with me now. And several of the jury members actually went. And one guy crawled on all fours and got up. Crawled on all fours, went up. And I remember he had this huge smile on his face. He's crawling off fours. And I, in the dream, I remember thinking, this is a demonic spirit of lust. Like literally like you're aware in the dream. Um, it was so vivid. And I remember finding Alice and I got to this elevator and I said, we got to get out of here now. And we got up and we went like halfway and there was an office there. Like we got off, there was an office. And I remember seeing all these uh, men and they were young boys and they were all in line to go down to the elevator. And uh, I remember thinking in the dream, that judge is going to molest all these kids. And it was a huge line of just boys. Uh, and I've never dreamed anything like this. It was very weird. And I said, it, it was a um, lustful gay spirit. And I remember thinking that in the dream. And I was thinking, he's going after all the boys. Look at him. And I remember thinking in the dream, I said, um, I told Alice, I said, I want you to stay in this room, lock the door. I'm going to fight. And in the dream, in the dream, this is where it got violent. There was, a, there was weapons all of a sudden on the wall, and I don't even know where they appeared, but there was weapons on the wall, and I grabbed it. And then all of a sudden, the, uh, and I remember thinking in the dream, uh, those, I, I remember thinking in the dream, I said, those officials are going to come up and get all these boys any minute. I only got a few minutes. So I told Alice to stay in the room, lock the room. And I, I went out, and I had a weapon in my hand, and I remember... All of a sudden, the boys, the dream transitioned, and these boys, I realized they all had weapons all of a sudden, and they were angels. And the angels were literally like protecting them, and we just started fighting. We started fighting these things, and all these officials started coming up, and literally, I'm talking like hands were getting cut off. I mean, eyeballs coming out of them. Uh, that's how violent this dream was. We're like, I mean, we were fighting. It would look like something out of 300 where I'm talking like, guy's head was cut off. The arms were cut off. I mean, blood going everywhere. Uh, and then a lot the, the, the figures that we would kill them and there was no blood. And I was like, okay. And I could tell in the dream it was spiritual. The whole thing was just spiritual. And I, I remember uh, I woke up right after that. I just woke up and it, it touched me right away. And I said, I got to text Pastor Moses. And it let me see a glimpse because it was kind of like the whole first part of the dream wasn't like I was there. It was just like I was just observing somebody else's dream or something. Um, and you know, if you heard me preach before, you know, God showed me so many dreams, it's, it's this, but this was so different in that it was like, I've never seen anything like that where weapons appeared on the wall and it was just like violent and God showed me the battle going on for kids. Uh, I counsel a lot of kids, you know, 30 to 40 teenagers a week in my private practice. And I would tell you 90, probably 90% 90 of them are addicted to pornography. Uh, I would say about half of them sexually molested. Uh, it's pretty, and I'm talking all races, all genders, everything. Uh, it, it's that, it's that huge of a war right now. Uh, I mean, even anybody 14 up is struggling with addiction issues. Every, everybody, uh, at 14 up, they're all struggling with addiction issues and, and it is prevalent all over. And God showed me that it was a court system and how the enemy was going after the kids. It was only kids. There were no adults. It was only kids that the enemy was going after. So when Emmanuel just talked about the court system thing, it just, it got me because I'm like, you know, children are the inheritance of the Lord. And even the kingdom of heaven has said, you know, talked about children. And, and you can see how serious it is. So the devil knows, he's like, if I can get this generation, you know, that's what he's saying. He says, if I can get this generation, you know, th th this is why I told my wife, I said, every day we have to be fighting for our kids. You got to get your house in order. You know, get your house in order. What are you kids looking at? What are you kids doing? Who are they talking to? You know, that's a big thing. You know, it's a big thing. So that's kind of what God's been showing me. And, uh, you know, even to this day, I think about that dream almost every day. I'm just like, and pray up with my kids one, two, three times a day over this. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. Let me tell you something, if you make God's business your business, He will make your business His business. I'm not surprised that God would reveal that to John because almost on a daily basis, this man is always lamenting with compassion for children. 
many, I know other psychologists and therapists and all whatnot, and they just talk about it as like it's a job. But he relates with his assignment as though it is a calling because his heart groans to see salvation in those children. There are times when he will call in the middle of the day and say, this just happened, we need to pray. He's here. Sometimes we're even on the leaders' prayer meeting and he will bring up issues of children. And this is not just a case of psych. He's not looking at it as a psycho psych psychological problem. He knows it's spiritual. Because the Bible says that the things of God are spiritually discerned. How be it they are foolishness to those who are without. But for those of us to, who are within, it has been given to us and to our children to know the mysteries of God. And so we will pray for these children. So I'm not surprised that God will reveal that to you because any time we pay attention with true intentionality, God is looking for partners. The Bible says that the eye of the Lord runs to and fro upon the earth, seeking for the man whose mind is stayed on him. It's an open invitation. Will you join in and participate? Or will you just continue to anticipate a rescue when God is waiting for you to do something also? I'm gonna bring out a couple of things from John's dream very quickly so that we can pray with those things. And this is thing number one. John kept saying, he was like, I wasn't there. He said, but I was there, I could see it, but I was just observing. Some of the most powerful revelations that we will receive happen just like that. Remember what Apostle Paul said, he says, I know a man, whether present in the body or outside of the body, I could not tell. He said, but he has been given visions of heaven and of holy angels, and he has heard words that must not be repeated. Once that can, he says, I heard things that I cannot even say. The details of what they were doing to those boys is not to be said, but it has been shown so that we can receive our instructions very duly and go into action. Isn't it amazing? that what he saw is playing out here today. He said to his wife, Alice, you go with the kids and shut the door. I am going to fight. What have we done today? We've asked the children to leave the room. I didn't even hear that part when he first told me the dream. But we have told the kids to go out today and it's interesting that Alice is the one teaching the children today. Since the beginning of the year, I don't even think Alice, is, it has been her turn, but it is her turn today. I know that this is the appointed time by God for us to show our true colors as warring spirits to fight on the behalf of these children. Those are not statistics. Those things that you heard, they are the heart of God. The heart of God is hurting over the spate of molestation. And the reason why the people that he saw appeared to be judges is because God wants us to know that we're dealing with the rulers of the darkness of this age. And the rulers of the darkness of this age are sentencing children to immorality. The child said, I am innocent. Yes, the child is innocent. Because there is a spirit that is in the world today that was described to us in Romans chapter 1 verse 26 that is called the reprobate mind. A spirit that takes people and corrupts their innocence by allowing them to breed desires within them that are ungodly. That spirit is called the reprobate mind. And it is one of the judges of the times that we live in. Every age, every generation, every dispensation has a new order of destructive elements coming out of hell to pass judgment. But guess what? We are judges also. And that is the reason why the Bible says judge with a righteous judgment. We're not supposed to, to separate ourselves from the children. We're supposed to stand in the gap and pray for them. So we're going to pray very quickly. My wife is going to lead us in prayer. But I want you to remember the elements of that vision. That there is a warfare going on. The Bible says, and there was war in the heavens. There is a warfare going on right now and it's a battle for the children. Now let me say this. Jesus, toward the end of his ministry, while he was teaching one of his, one of his sermons, the disciples did not like the fact that children were bringing disruption to the meeting. And they were like, oh, these children, we need to get rid of them. And Jesus was like, no. You need to let them come because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. These days, many of us, when we're praying at home, we don't bring our children into the prayer because we don't like the look on their faces. 
They look disinterested. They don't look happy. You're like, okay, okay, don't bother. I'm going to bother you. Don't bother me. I'm just going to go pray. No, we do the opposite. We bring them in. You can frown all you want, but you need to be here. We look at the children of the world. We look at children outside of our homes. And we're like, ah, oh, that one, it looks like he's confused about his sexuality. You look at that one, oh, that one is addicted to this. This one looks like he's on drugs. And we're pointing fingers when we're supposed to be reaching out. Now, this is the last thing that I'm going to say about that dream before my wife comes to pray. John said there were weapons on the wall. The weapons are the banners that the angels are holding. You know, I saw angels surrounding us holding banners. What you need to pray is already, is already available. You just need to tap into the realm of the spirit. If you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. If you have yet to receive the gift of tongues in that manner, ask for it. But whatever you do today, make sure that you're allowing yourself to pray what is the heart of God. Ask and say, God, who do I pray for? What exactly? What it shows you, just pray. No one's, you don't have a microphone, so if you call out people's names, it's not going to be recorded. So feel free to call people's names. Call their names and say, John, you will no longer be addicted to pornography. I know you're struggling with that, but I break that power over you. Every judge that is trying to condemn you to that life of addiction, I overrule their authority with the authority of Christ. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Call forth the name of God to cancel such operations over our children. Because, and Jesus told his disciples, he says, for this is the kingdom of heaven. God's kingdom is coming to the earth and Satan does not want God to have people when he comes. That is why he's targeting the children. It is your place and mine to make sure that we are soul winners. Rosemary, praise the Lord. God is good. At this point in time, I want to encourage you, please, if you can stand up, if you're not pregnant, please stand up and pray and just put your heart into it. This is what God cares about. You see, we'll have another day of singing and dancing and listening to a sermon that is funny so we can be happy. But for today, we're at war. Amen. Praise the Lord. Whew. I don't know about you guys. I'm just fired up. <laughs> it's like we're just starting. This is the art of the Father that we will pray. We will communicate with Him. So, I just want to share my... Um, I just want to share a vision with us quickly so we know what we are dealing with. And I thank God that this house we're praying for children. If you are on Epas on Watch, you know that we pray for children every time we meet. And this is like seven days a week. And we always say we have to pray. The Lord showed me a vision before I started Epas on Watch. He said, go and wake my daughters up. Because the Lord said, the women are sleeping. My helpers that are supposed to be on watch, they are sleeping. Go and wake them up. And the vision that the Lord first showed me was that I saw children in prison. In prison, they were wearing the orange suit or whatever color they were. And they were all going to hell. And the Lord said, go and wake my daughters up. Go and wake my daughters up to rescue these children. Tonight we are going to pray. Please walk around. Be free. This is warfare. You can't stand. If you stand there, the enemy will shoot you or your children. You don't want that. You want to walk around and let the enemy know that we are not playing here. Welcome to Communion House. If this is your first time, we might look strange. Trust me, we are children of God. We hear from the Lord. We hear from the Lord. We don't mess about here. Amen. So guys, as we go into prayers, first of all, I want your incense of praise to rise up tonight. Praise the Lord. Give Him praise. Let the Lord hear your voice. He is present here. The Lord is here. <laughs> Lift up your voice. Praise Him. Praise the King of Kings. Worship the Lord. If you don't know what to say to him, speak in your heavenly language. Build up yourself. He demands all the master faith. Speaking in tongues. Father Lord, we thank you. 
Lord, we give you praise. We exalt you, Father. We do not take your presence for granted. In your presence, there is strength. If you are feeling faint, Father, if you are feeling tired, begin to ask him for strength. In the presence of God, there is strength, there is healing, there is deliverance. Begin to ask him and say, Father, I am in your presence. Strengthen me. Give me strength to pray. Give me strength to pray. We are at war. I, I have been sleeping. Now is the time for me to rise up. My consultoriano, my derebo shooter, my kia derebo kora basata. Father Lord, we give you praise. We exalt you. We glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <laughs> you know, this scripture that the Lord gave me today, Pastor has talked about it. My sister Manuelita has mentioned it too. First John 4 17. It says, Love has been perfected among us in this, <laughs> that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Did you read that last part? <laughs> it said, because as he is, so are we in this world. This is talking about Jesus. It didn't say as he was. You know why? <laughs> Jesus is not dead. He is alive. He is telling us. He said, as he is, so are we in this world. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. Whatever Jesus did on earth, whatever he's doing now, we are able to do it. I want you to lift up your eyes and begin to pray and say, Father, open my eyes to see what you, to see myself the way you see me. Open my eyes, give me that boldness. Jesus went about doing good. Open your mouth and say it. I will go about doing good. I have the power and the authority to cast out demons. I will begin to do that from this moment onwards in the mighty name of Jesus lift up your hands and I'm a sort of the and my cause he says as Jesus is so I am Jesus was never afraid of demons I will not be afraid of demons in the mighty name of Jesus whenever Jesus saw anything that was dead he brought it to life this is what I begin to do right now in the mighty name of Jesus my sister about Jesus saw the people that were oppressed and he delivered them. This is what I am doing now from this moment onwards in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, Katsotoni Adu, Master of Shasai Adu, Mandi Adu, Sasai, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Finally, I want to read <laughs> this scripture to us to let you know. <laughs> John 14, verse 13. And it says, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. All that we have prayed, all that we have asked today, I want us to shout the name of Jesus seven times. <laughs> name of Jesus! Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! Man, that of a shot on the ado, my kind of a shot I am, my sister of a shot on the mouth, my Korea Miss Satay, Reba Satan of a shot I am, my Korea Massatan of a shot out, my Korea Nanama Satay, hey, my daughter of a mom, in the name of Jesus! Oh, come on. We ain't done. Let's talk to God. Shiara, you can't do this. Fukura, ya, ya, ya. Ira, ya, da, da, si, ya, kia, da, 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 si. Oh, come on. Talk to him. Siya, da, da, kia, da, 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 si. Ukura, 
Oh, come on. This is an unusual night. Father, we give you praise. Oh, God of angel armies, we welcome you in this place. Family, what have we heard thus far? What have we heard thus far? To go forth. To be in position. The man of God, Brother John said, and it struck me up. He said, I'm about to go fight. I'm about to go fight. And I want to ask us, why are we hearing all of this? Why are we hearing all of this? Because the land is ours. The territory is ours. We are soldiers in the army of God, but we got to show up. We got to do battle. Let me hit, let me give you something because I want you to be encouraged because the enemy is utterly terrified. The scripture say in the book of Joshua chapter 2 verse 9. Now what we're praying tonight is what the children of Israel experience. Watch this going into Jericho because the land was theirs. They had to show up. See, we're tearing down walls in behalf of our loved ones, in behalf of the children. Okay, because the Lord does a new thing. It reads here in verse 9, chapter 2 of Joshua, and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard the Lord, how he dried up the water of the Red Sea for when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who are on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. The terror of the Most High God has fallen upon the enemy because of our testimony, because of what we declared, what the Lord God has done for us. The Lord God of Israel. Come on, somebody. The scriptures read, and as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven, above and on earth. I'm trying to tell you tonight that the enemy shall hear the camp of the Most High God tonight. The camp of the Uluwayekege. I'm trying to tell you he is the Most High God. The one of heaven and of earth. And the camp shall hear it tonight. Come on, let's talk to God. See ya da 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 the scriptures read this Joshua chapter 2 verses 23 through 24 it reads so the men the two men returned descended from the mountain now what was ministered to us early this season that we were going up the mountain that we were going to encounter God and what happens when you come down from the mountain? You come down with instruction. You come down ready to take territory because the Lord has revealed to you what to do. And so even as the word says, this is our hour to descend from the mountain. And the scriptures say in verse 24, and they said to Joshua, truly the Lord has delivered all the land into our hands. For indeed all the inhabitants of the country are faint hearted because of us. So you got to understand the enemy he putting up such a big fight because he over with he's over with and we got to show up and show out come on somebody she caught up the book of Joshua chapter 6 1 verses 1 it says now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel 
None went out and none came in. I'm here to tell you, don't be fooled. All of this shut down and locked down and shut up and lock up, it's because of us. It's because of us. They don't want us in here, but we know by faith, by the word that this territory is ours. And the word says, I want somebody to get excited. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given you Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city. Now, what did we do earlier this week? We went up and down this sanctuary and marched. We went up and down and marched. It says this, and the priest shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. What happened in that same meeting? The man of God ministered that there was a sound of deliverance. There's a marching. There's a sound that goes forth when we're pressing in to take land. It says, it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. Come on, somebody. We've heard the sound. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, watch this, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. The people shall what? They shall go up. What's going for? What's going up? It's going forth. What is this our season to do to go forth? Somebody give God praise. And it reads here. So the people shouted. You, you, I bet you got a clue now. We're going to shout tonight. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Family, I've come to encourage us tonight that the city is ours, that the hearts of our children is ours, that this territory is ours, that all of what the Lord has sworn to our fathers that have come before us, it is ours. Come on, somebody, let's talk to God. Oh, I want to help somebody tonight. I want to help somebody tonight. When the man of God, when Brother John was sharing with us, as I stood here in the back, I saw an angel that stood here with a giant sword in his hand with chains. I'm telling you, Brother John, that dream that you had was so violent because these angels that have come to do battle with us, they're bloodthirsty. They're bloodthirsty. They're waiting to do the will of God. They're waiting for us to show up. And I'm trying to tell you, you got to get fierce. You got to, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, da, 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 Come on, let's talk to God. Yeah, I did this. Oh, cool, I Yeah, she can do this. Yeah, she did this. Ah, sura, ya, da, si, eh. Sura, baba, si. Now, the walls are about to come down. The walls are about to come down. The walls are about to come down. Let's give the Lord a shout. Let's give the Lord a shout. Hey! He that sits in the heavens shall laugh. Ah, 
Kase boboru dushi titi baba ambus mambe Amam babun si mambe Shemalamam bosom si mambe Eye ma bakasa ma bakasa Le para bakasa shis Oh I say kase 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 Oh I kase 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 Oh ba wa kase 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 La me se kase kase Hallelujah I want you to um I want you to just look up here. Let me uh, see how well this illustration can carry the message. The Bible says, and there was war in the heavens. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, of this age in particular. What does that mean? When you sleep, Kenyatta, your, does your spirit sleep? No. Your subconscious mind is awake and busy. That's why when your body is asleep, you're dreaming dreams. God is talking to you. You're fighting battles. You're receiving insights. You're getting downloads of how to improve the lives of men, how to improve the world, how to make a change. And yet you're sleeping. When Solomon received wisdom from God, he wasn't awake. The Bible says he was asleep and God came to him in the dream. And so even though his body was asleep, he was engaged in the Holy One of Israel. And so when the Bible says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, that means the battle that we are enlisted in is always on. The battle is always ongoing. So think about what we've done in here as you actively logging in to your spirit self that is doing warfare. So whenever you're not in the spirit, whenever you're not praying like this, it doesn't mean that the battle is not on. It just means you are not standing in your position as you should. And sometimes it's okay for you to do things in the natural because we're still in this world. But we need to pray always. The Bible says pray without ceasing. You don't stop. And so every chance you get, log back in. Every time you get, possess your avatar and do battle because that is the real you. The more you get yourself familiar with the real you, now the better for you when the Lord Jesus comes to establish his kingdom because by then you would have been more comfortable in your new skin. Remember that when Jesus comes, we're not going to have the same bodies that we have now. The Bible says we will put away corruption and put on incorruptibility. We'll put, we will put on immortality. That immortal suit, that immortal avatar that God has for you is already active. And when you pray and intercede like this, that is exactly what you're doing. Your soul, the same spirit that is in you, is present in another body. And that is the reason why you're like, it doesn't feel like I'm here, but I am here. Yes, this, your physical body is not there, but your other body is there, equipped to do battle, capable of doing things that are seemingly impossible from where you are now. I don't know about you, but when I think about how powerful we are in the spirit, I want to spend more time enjoying that privilege because it's a privilege and it comes with responsibility. So I'm not supposed to just sit here and anticipate. I'm supposed to go there and participate. And I do that through the process of prayer. You see the kind of prayer that you have seen here today is a good starting point. Where we're going collectively, I, my desire is that we get to a time <laughs> not long from now wherein every one of us will be dialed in praying with words that cannot be uttered. The most powerful prayers are prayers that can't be heard. Remember when Hannah was praying and the, the high priest looked at her 
And I was like, this woman must be drunk. Religious people will look at you because the high priest then represented the religious person. How did we know that the high priest in the time of Hannah was a religious person? What's his name? Eli. Eli was a religious person because when you look at the fruits that he bore, they were corrupt. Jesus says, by their fruits we shall know them. But all of his fruits, what is fruit? That which comes out of you. All of his sons were corrupt. Religion does not give birth to righteousness. But when the woman of God came and she prayed as though she was drunk, she prayed so because she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 puts it best. The Bible says, likewise, Romans 8 26. You may want to memorize it too. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in all our infirmities. For we do not know how to pray or what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit makes intercessions for us with groanings that can't be uttered. The lady was groaning in her spirit and that was why it was not heard in the flesh. It is good that we can start praying in the natural, but the end of our prayer should be in the spirit, wherein we're groaning, but it can't be heard because it's too far away. Hannah was in the temple, but her spirit was right in front of the throne of God. How can you shout from heaven and hear it on the earth? She could not be heard. And Paul got to that place in his ministry. He said, I heard words that cannot be uttered. Groanings that can be uttered. And I know that we're getting there. Because let me tell you something. When you get there, the power is indescribable. It is pretty much like someone is running on a 1.5 volt battery. And suddenly you unplug that and give them 240 volts. Imagine how energized they will be. Don't worry, you're not going to blow up. God made you to have the capacity to carry that much power. But Satan wants you to be okay with your little 1.5 volt battery that you charge sometimes and sometimes you don't even charge it. So what do we do? Let us get ourselves even more accustomed to praying in the Holy Ghost. Pray to the point wherein if you take a break from praying for two hours, maybe because you have to go to work or send emails or talk to people or play with children, the next time you get back into prayer, it will be as though you never left. I was praying right now as though I didn't stop praying last night or the night before simply because there is a way you can set the momentum going in the realm of the spirit such that the limitations of the flesh no longer have a hold on you. A lot of us, the weakness of our flesh is the reason why we don't pray. You can overcome that. You can attain such a, a momentum. Praise the Lord. Let's be seated. And let's just give thanks to God in our hearts. Praise God and thank God for these guys who have prayed with us today. Samuel, Emmanuel, and Christian. I mean, I don't even think you could have any three names more fantastic than that. You have Christian, you have Emmanuel, and you have Samuel. There you go. We have been heard. Samuel means God has heard. Emmanuel means God is with us. And Christian means like Christ. And so when you pray like Christ, God will hear you and he will be with you. You don't even have to go looking for revelation when you're in the presence of God. He's everywhere. He's abundant. And so I just want to thank God and I thank God that this day came and um, to be honest, when I saw this meeting from Tuesday, I couldn't wait. I was delighted. My wife, I told my wife, I said, this meeting, we cannot miss this meeting. But then the devil tried. Opposition after opposition. And then I would smile. This week alone, even before I left home, the call that I was on, I had to jump on a quick business meeting. And the things I was hearing, it was almost as if I should just cut off the phone, switch off the internet, and just go lay down somewhere and just not be bothered with anything else. But then I, I listened and I looked at my brother on the phone <laughs> and I said, I am going to church. <laughs> this is yet another attempt to discourage me I said, but no, it doesn't matter because my attention should be on things above and not on things beneath. If I seek first the kingdom as I should, every of these other things will be added unto me. I give you this charge in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, that every spirit of slumber that has tormented you, that has plagued your Christianity, you will be delivered so that you can be a spiritual believer 
And what I mean by spiritual believer is you become a believer that is very active in the realm of the spirit where the real decisions are being made. We spend too much time fighting the consequences of decisions that are made in the spirit about our destinies. And we become so accustomed to that level of operation wherein we're trying to mitigate consequences. Whereas God expects us to operate as judges who are there where the faith, where, where, the, where the fate and the destinies of not just you, but others are being determined. What you see manifest in people's lives and in particular children is not accidental. The Bible says every single thing that we see is a function of what is not seen. Even the world made out of that which is unseen. Isn't that what the apostle said? So everything that you see, the behavior in your children is determined in the realm of the spirit. The lack in your finances is determined in the realm of the spirit. Third John, Two, what does it say? I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Everything is determined in the realm of the spirit. So why shouldn't I be a participator where my destiny is being determined? The forces that govern life are not in the White House. They're not in the Senate. They are in the realm of the spirit. But let's not get it twisted. A lot of human beings who are in power in the natural are also in power in the spiritual. When you know the secret behind some of these boys who are controlling billions and who are controlling territories, you will feel ashamed of yourself because they're operating spiritual principles. Many of them pray to demons more than you pray to God. Many of them fast and perform rituals. And you, that rituals have been performed for, that is just expected to exercise authority, you're slacking. So we need to understand that nothing is accidental. I say all of that to say that don't leave this place without taking the oil of intercession. Take it home with you. Shut the door of your house behind you today as you go in and say, I am going in and I'm going to continue from here a spiritual believer, one who is mindful of spiritual things through the exercise and the activities of prayer and exercising my divine authority to ensure that Satan no longer takes advantage of me, my children, my neighborhood, or my territory. Because if you as a believer, who else did God give power to? You. Other people are borrowing power, but you have been given freely. Let us cultivate the habit of praying. We're going to close the meeting, but I want to give you, amen, praise the Lord. I'm going to give you a quick insight um, into the coming days, and then um, Alan is going to come out to close the off a service to receive the offering and pray over them because it's part of our worship, our communion house. Again, we do not give out of necessity. We're not giving to meet needs primarily, but we are giving because the Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance. And so it is a form of worship because a lot of us, we hold on to things so dearly that God is not able to bless us more because it is out of generosity that we increase, not by holding on to things. And so that is coming up shortly. But Psalms 45 verse 7. I want to just leave us with this verse of scripture. Can we even make that? Okay, we have another scripture for breaking bread. So you can give out the communion. Do I have one yet? Okay, not yet. Uh, but this one is the pre-communion. This one is different. Um, okay, let me tell you what this is. So that um, many of us, we are so determined to pray. We're so, in a way, intrigued by the experience that we have had in here. And we're like, my goodness, I should pray like that. And you're so determined to pray. But your determination should not just be out of sentiment and it must not end at your emotional and mental level. That determination has to come from your within so that it can mean something. All right? So this verse of scripture here, I believe is going to enable us to be able to do that. Psalms 45 verse 7. What does it say? It says, you love righteousness and you hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Let's read that one more time. It says you love righteousness, you hate wickedness, therefore God, your God, 
has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. This is one of the prophecies of David about the Messiah. So why was he anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions? Because he loves righteousness and he hates wickedness. The secret to imbibing the spiritual and heavenly culture of intercession is exactly that. You need to love righteousness to the point wherein your soul wants to see righteousness more than anything else in the world. What will keep the door shut and keep your focus straight on the heart of God is the love to see the kingdom of God come. The enemy continues to sell us on wickedness. He wants us to feel okay with certain things. And everything that you feel okay with will remain active in the territories of your life. It is not okay for your children to not know God. It is not okay for your children to have addictions. It is not okay for your spouse to be lukewarm spiritually. It is not okay for you to continue to struggle with little, little things, little, little sins, little problems. Every now and again, you can't seem to overcome them. They keep plaguing you. It is not okay. You have to hate such levels. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We can't stay falling short. We need to come up higher. And you need to love that state wherein you and your household you're serving the Lord. You need to love that state wherein when you pray for the sick they recover. You need to love that state of knowing that the heart of God is pleased because of your participation. And when you begin to love more to see the will of God come to pass upon the earth your soul will find the rest that it's been seeking in the presence of God and it will never leave. That was what David said. He says, I have found it. You can take everything else away from me. He says, but I want to be in his presence. That kind of love, nothing can take you out of it. So if you want to pray, love the righteousness of the kingdom. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and every other thing is over. Every other thing will be added unto you. So praise God. Now, the last scripture, which is what we're going to use to break bread before Alan comes up, is, um, is very close to it. You don't have to flip too far away. It is Psalms 48. We're going to read verse 2 and verse 12. Verse 2 says, it says, in fact, let's read from verse 1. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth, is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. The reason why this is important is because I want us to go home and pray that God will reveal to us his holy mountains. When I was praying just now, I saw the holy mountains of God. And I saw the ones that have been rescued, been set upon the holy mountains of God and the uniform were being changed from the rugged, rickety prison uniforms that they were wearing and white robes were put on them. When you pray and you fight in the realm of the spirit, you also want to see progress. It helps to encourage you to pray more. So ask the Lord to show you victory, to show you triumph. It is very key because you don't just want to keep praying and praying and not even see the outcome. No, we need to see. Not because we walk by sight, but because such feedback allows for our confidence and our determination to be boosted. So verse 12, and then we're going to break bread. It says, walk about Zion and go all around her. Count her towers. It says, walk around Zion, go all around her and count her towers. It is critical for you to count the towers. Okay, that's why I'm not seeing it's all covered with sweat. You need to walk around and count the towers. What are the towers? The towers are the territories or territories that we have already claimed. So when you're praying, count the towers. Thank God for the victories that you have already. Thank God for the souls that you have prayed for, believing that their salvation is guaranteed because Jesus, prays for, Jesus died for them, you have prayed for them, and God is coming for them. Count the towers as you walk around. And I want you to literally take this scripture as a walking around kind of scripture. When you pray, pray walking around. 
walking around and give God glory. Give him thanks as you walk around. Because some of the reasons why we sleep while we pray is because our bodies are not in, involved. And so they just want to sleep. But when you involve your body by walking around and moving around, before you know what's going on, you will teach your soul how to bring your body into subjection. Sometimes when I'm praying, I don't even know what my body is doing anymore. Because that body has been presented to God, a living sacrifice. This body, whatever the soul is doing to win this battle, now you're committed to it. You're no longer your own. You are part of this process. You understand what I mean? And that's the, that's the way the energy comes from. Naturally, we get tired after a couple of minutes. But if your soul has taken over, it gives your body the juice that it needs to play its own part in keeping you awake for praying with some understanding. Alrighty, so let's quickly go ahead and break bread. You can sit down if you want to. In fact, I think we all should sit down as we break bread today. And I'm going to see if I can quickly do this. Because I'd like to see, I'd like to see y'all from here. So, you're saying, Brother Moses, so what exactly are we breaking bread with today? What we're breaking bread with today is that our eyes will be open to see the beauty of Zion. To see the beauty of the victory that is already secured in Christ. And that as we pray, we will pray walking around Zion with the confidence and the authority that everything that we ask God for in accordance to his will, particularly the salvation of family members and the deliverance of children, which is the will of God. Our children are supposed to be at the feet of Jesus. When you pray those things, also give thanks for victory. Count the towers of conquest. Give thanks as you pray. So your eyes will be open and your heart will be full of praise as you pray in the mighty name of Jesus. So let us take the bread and call it what it is. Jesus took the bread and the Bible says, he said, this bread is my body. And he took the wine and he says, this wine is my blood. And so we do the same and we say, this is the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. As we partake of his body and his blood today in remembrance of him, may our eyes be open to see the glory of Zion, to see the confidence that we need to have because Jesus already overcame. We're not praying out of frustration, but we're praying because we're exercising the privilege that we have to be partners with him and we're bringing home the victory. It's already done by the Lord Jesus. We are just letting it ring to the ends of the earth and to ring also in battle. So Lord in Jesus name, we thank you because yet again, you have been with us as we have come to be here in your name. And we go forth from here with a tangible measure of your presence so that even those that were left at home will know that we have been with you in Jesus' name. You may eat and drink in Jesus' name. John, I just heard a conversation. And what I heard that there is more that heaven wants to bring you into. But Jesus, like my wife reminded us, said, as I am, so are you. He made sacrifices for us as an example so that we can also learn the art of sacrifice. There are sacrifices to be made, but there is more where that came from. There is a level of involvement that heaven wants to bring you to in this war that is ongoing for souls. So now that you know, you know what to do. And the Lord is going to help you to make room, to make plans, and to not tarry. You will make haste in delivering upon the altar that which the Lord asks, that you may pick up that which the Lord has given. The heart of intercession. Many intercessors were born in here today by the grace of God. And I'm excited about that. Praise the Lord. Alrighty. God bless you guys. See you on Tuesday. Alan. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's prepare our hearts for giving. As the uh, giving details come on the screen. What a night tonight, y'all off the chain. Father, we give you praise. <clears throat> and I thank God for you all here that have been desiring to pray more, to really press into what the Lord has for us here. 
because by your participation, there has been impartation, okay? And so really press into that going home, all right? <clears throat> the giving details are on the screen. If you need an envelope, uh, we have an envelope here at the main new um, desk. You can grab that there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you are here and um, have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, just meet us on this side here. We love to pray with you because clearly you see this is a house that prays, all right? And we desire for you all to take that home with you. So we just love to touch and agree with you. Amen. Father, we give you praise for this night, oh God, for you have ordained it. You have seen fit, oh God, for us to be a part of what you are doing. Lord, revelation has gone forth, understanding, wisdom, and insight we have received by your hand and by your hand alone. You truly, oh God, have commanded your angels to take charge of us, oh God, and we give you praise for it. Now, Lord, we ask of thee to look upon these offerings, oh God, let them be sweet smelling in your sight, oh God. Let them be pleasing unto you. For we know, as your word declares, that you give seed unto the sower. And Lord, we thank you for this seed that you've blessed us with. Father, we thank you for this night of prayer, oh God, of spending time with you. For we indeed shall see the increase, oh God, in our lives. Those things that we have waited on you for, oh God, for the furthering of the kingdom. For the implementation of the kingdom here on earth. Oh God, all glory and honor belong to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen, amen. So we will be, uh, praise God, we'll be back on Tuesday, 6.30, family dinner and teaching Tuesday, potluck, come eat good, come fellowship with us. And on tomorrow, all right, the fellas that are here, if you have not heard yet, we will be at Top Golf Buford, okay, one o'clock to just go chop it up, go have fun, have some godly fellowship uh, amongst like brothers in Christ, okay? So we want you to be a part of that. If you need details, please reach out to me or Brother John, okay? And we'll get you right. Praise God. Father, we thank you again for tonight. Lord, how you have seen us and moved in our midst and have allowed us to encounter you. Now, Lord, we ask of thee for traveling mercies, O oh God, and we give you praise. All glory and honor belong to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed weekend.